What's up, everybody, and welcome in to the Backliners podcast, Agro and Barracuda, as per usual. Today, joined by Dev, local smite genius, Daniel Ponpon Cooper. Pon, thanks for taking the time. Uh, I'm sure you uh, don't get very sick of thinking about smite all day as it is. Um, so Yeah, no, definitely not. <laughs> Actually, it was really fun. We had a conversation at work today because people were searching for me. And I show up as Pon Pon Cooper on certain things and Daniel Cooper in some. I don't want to be called Daniel Pon Pon Cooper in the system because it sounds a little pretentious. Because, like, the, <laughs> the quotes on the name. Yeah, but right. you just did it. So I guess I have to do it now. Well, listen, around here, you deserve to have the pretentious title. Mm. Uh, you can decide if you want to uh, around work on your own time, I suppose. But uh, a big midseason patch just mm. got spoiled. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I can't wait. Pon, uh... I remember many meetings ago when you were like, mm -hmm. what if we just removed boots? Um, and everyone was like, uh, I guess it could work. Um, mm -hmm. it, talk to me about the idea of how we got to removing boots uh, at, here at midseason. Yeah, so for a really long time, we talked about boots and whether they should stay in the game or not. And the general thing was it's it felt like it should stay because one legacy it just mm -hmm. has been in the game forever two it makes sure that movement around the maps is certainly paced you can't start the game rotating at 18 percent movement speed for example and three we actually felt like there might be some validity to the idea that like this is a staple item everyone can build as long as you're building boots your build's kind of okay mm -hmm. um but over time we really just kind of saw that like that just wasn't the case new players come in and want to build cool items and then we're, we're telling them no you build boots and they're like why to build boots like i don't care about movement speed i want the cool passive that makes me do big damage yep um so over time a lot of the things that we thought were really core to the game just kind of eroded away a little bit um but we just still didn't think it was really valid to have the don't let people rotate super fast and so removing boots to increase item diversity and then bringing in movement speed over time to let you roam the map at a decent pace keep that kind of preserved that felt like a kind of the merging of all the things that we've learned over the years and felt like a good time to do it was now where we kind of have a slightly bigger map than normal as well mm -hmm. so any change to like boots that we're going to do would have some imp more impact here yeah uh bara oh i should say bara and i recorded a content piece for well over an hour today talking about <laughs> mid-season and the changes for every role and it, it it's like a new episode of role queue that'll be coming out in the future so uh hopefully we're not we're not bear on the well here barry but uh yeah. talk to me about good. your role in, in removing boots and your initial reaction um, I was kind of surprised because I'd heard like down the grapevine that is that a, that's a phrase, right? That's a phrase. Yeah, it's okay. through the grapevine, but I'll give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got two words right. That's pretty good for me right now. <laughs> um, uh, I was kind of shocked that it actually went through, but playing on it, it felt really good. And I well, I think my role got buffed, and that's probably why it felt so good. Because mm -hmm. being able to get a bow item early feels very good. And yeah. with the, like, Aussie changes, it kind of feels like the Season 2 or 3 build, where you just went, like, Boots, Ickle, Aussie. I think it was, like, Tier 2, like, Draining Blade back then or something. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, but it feels like that, where I'm just coming online super fast. And, oh, yeah, one thing we talked about today uh, was the... Like everything getting tankier on the map. Yep. I think it might have to get tuned up even a little bit more because mm. I was kind of shredding through everything mm. on the map. And it felt like my farm rotations were really fast, like faster than normal, which I don't know if that's intended, but um, yeah. Feels, feels good. Feels way better than it did, I think. Yeah. I think um, I've only gotten a, a, a few play tests in. I haven't gotten a chance to play PTS yet, but feel like in mid lane like i just have so many options on what i get to build now like yeah i can go pen rush i could go warlock staff i could go book of thoth i could go rod or Charon's coin or chronos pendant like i can skip a starter i can do a starter like mm -hmm. I've, I've just got options um that are very uh, let me put it this way it's gonna be hard playing live uh where i have to build boots uh yeah oh yeah in yeah. the, for the foreseeable future because boy do i just want to not i just want to not buy them um i just want to not buy them all the time uh i should probably have done this all earlier i'm really good at my job and podcasting all that kind of stuff we will uh be taking questions for sure um about mid-season that kind of stuff but i think it might it probably makes the most sense to kind of like run through every all the big notes that we might want to do mm -hmm. maybe we won't, we won't have time for questions we'll uh, we'll figure it out 
Um, I'm just kind of going down. I should post this. I'm gonna post this in the prediction chat. Uh, of course, if you're listening, you can just find the um, the update notes by going to smitegame.com and clicking on updates, and uh, it's all right there. Even I was able to find it, so you know it's easy. And we're going from the top. So new objective, the Draugr. Uh, mm. Talk to me about this one, uh, Pon, because in the, when talking to a lot of the pros today, they uh, they were pretty split on how important this is going to be. Yeah, so when we actually first started doing the kind of 8R7 map playtest, one thing that we noticed was like, how important should this objective be? And we actually did a lot of iteration on it, but I think the goal is this should be something that you feel is relatively rewarding to go take, but doesn't dissuade you from going for Fire Giant, right? Like, this yep. is the thing to get after a really good gank where maybe Gold Fury is down, you can still go gank that side and still get something else. If you know you're giving up Fire Giant because you've been bullied out, you can send someone over there to go get it really quickly to help you defend against the Siege. It really is the, like, kind of, like, Pyromancer, maybe a little bit less level of objective to get on the map. Um, and we felt that that was good for a few reasons. One is it doesn't box everyone super hard into, like, you have to go for this objective. Mm -hmm. That would put too much weight on the duo side to where, like, controlling dual lane is already an advantage because of Gold Fury. If there's also now the super objective that, like, is also very valuable, you get too much weight onto that side of the map. Mm -hmm. um, but it just also means that you don't feel forced to have to go to the side of the map ever. So when you do get it, it's natural when you go for it. Um, you never feel like you have to really change up too hard what you're doing to go potentially away from all the team fighting to go do this like objective on the side of them. Um, but we did want something that felt new on the map that just gave you a bit more flexibility in situations where you are naturally over the side of the map. It's not intended to be the new Pyromancer. It's really just intended to be something extra for the map that you can go. Yeah, Burger King kind of stole my question in chat here, Barry. Is it important enough in, in your mind so far to be fighting over in competitive games? Uh, only if you're going to be defending on your towers. I don't know how big the experience in gold is for it. I want to say it's like um, 55, 60 global. It's 30 okay. XP. Base is 30 XP, 35 gold, and it gets one every minute. One of okay, both so, yeah, for, for every minute. I'm generally taking it like around like either at the start of the game or yeah um, um go ahead it's, it's not good enough to like fight over like have a crazy team fight over but if you see the adc going for it, you can play to like steal it and play for that also i think it makes split pushing adcs better because you can just go over there get the objective and then continue to push down your lane whereas before you were just playing for the towers and now you can play for like the i guess like fire giant defense idea as well mm -hmm. um which just makes split pushing, in my opinion, just better. Yeah, I uh, I think that it is going, you know, teams... I think that the defense buff is good enough for, for those without the notes in front of them. Uh, whenever you get the Draugr buff, Towers and Phoenixes receive a stacking buff of plus 7% increased power and plus 5% damage mitigation for every allied god within their radius. Max three stacks, last 240 seconds. I think that defense buff is good enough that... Mm -hmm. If we're like dominating and we have a composition that wants to close out the game quickly, I might want to send someone from our firefight over to the other side of the map just to ensure that the other team doesn't get Draugr because mm -hmm. otherwise it's going to really slow down our siege. Um, and plus, you know, Emperor's armor might be unlocked right now for supports because True. you have a new you have a new slot. So Emperor's plus Draugr, all of a sudden you've got a tower that's hitting harder, taking less damage, and firing faster. So i think i think it's pretty good um it felt pretty good in the play tests but we'll see how important it really is now or there's a new go ahead maybe you get it before you go fire giant yeah totally yeah i just think denying it when you have the lead is important mm -hmm. yeah. um and i like that it's so far away from fire um mm -hmm. i like that it's on the opposite side of the map it makes you play the map better which i'll that's my favorite thing I've cast Smite for five years now. <laughs> the thing that still gets me the most excited about watching pro matches is watching teams who are really good at playing the map. And I, it's a new way to play the map, which I'm excited mm -hmm. about. As well yeah, as... Also, go ahead, Bon. I also like how it's, it is on that duo side. So, for example, let's say you get the first Fire Giant. A lot of times, team will go for that far side dual lane Phoenix because that's the one that's painful to defend when they're trying to contest the next Fire Giant that comes up. Right. That's mm -hmm. just naturally something to go grab while you're on that side, too. So... There's a few situations that just kind of happen where you can go for it, take it and deny your team, the enemy team, the chance of having it. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I think it's in uh, it's in the right spot for sure. 
Um, all right, how about the new buff? There's a green buff back on the map. I say back because pre-season one, there was a green buff. I don't even know if I was playing when, when green buff was around. I was. I was on the, the yep. losing lane, the weak lane, the one that had to deal with green buff so they could just dive you and yep. regen their whole health pool in that in that minion wave. Yeah, it's a lot less broken than it used to be. Uh, yeah. I, I can tell you that much. That green buff was something else. Um, but this green buff is focused around support. So it's it's on the, the red buff side of the jungle, kind of opposite where those back harpies are. And whenever you grab it, um, you get 50 health and mana, plus an additional 30 for every 50 total protection. So that's why it's mm -hmm. focused more for supports. The enhanced version gives you 10 MP5 and HP5, which feels nice. But the big deal for me as a backliner, as someone who's not picking this up very often, is the fact that nearby jungle buffs won't expire for your allies whenever you're around them. So if you're a support, mm -hmm. you've got green, you're near your ADC who has purple, the purple timer just stops counting down um, and it lets you have it a little bit longer, lets you set up for invades potentially. How uh, how impactful has this been in your mind, Pon, when it comes to playtesting? Um, it's been so interesting to try and play around. Uh, in our playtest, it's, it's sometimes hard to kind of organize like the very high-level tactics, but the most success I've actually seen it is when you're getting that purple respawn or you're getting the red respawn where you're going to be the aggressor, Letting your mid take their red into aggressing on the enemy red is huge. Mm -hmm. Letting your hunter have that purple buff still active when you're trying to invade that purple buff is huge. Um, that's really where supports are often kind of like they'll leech some experience from mid, they'll leech some experience from dual lane. As long as they're around them for just a little bit, that means the next time you're having that major objective control engagement, you're going to have a buff that you previously didn't if your support actually goes and gets this and stands next to you. So it's a good incentive to actually let your support leech a little bit of that wave because you get that extra really big impactful thing to do every two minutes. Mm -hmm. Look, Bear, I don't think Jake's going to be hanging out with you a whole lot uh, over in yeah, Euro, but we'll... maybe he'll be picking up green at the very least. <laughs> we'll see if he ever comes back to my lane. <laughs> Lately, that guy's just been piecing out at two minutes, you know, exploring the rest of the map, you know, seeing the mid camp, seeing the blue buff. So we'll see. Hopefully, I can beg him to come back, you know, extend my purple buff. But I mean, we'll see. <laughs> we shall see indeed. Pon, uh, clarification question that I should definitely know Does it pause? Um, it does not pause fire giant buff, I'm assuming. No. So uh, my understanding is it only pauses main buffs. It doesn't interact with other green buffs and yep. it, by pausing it or by not letting it expire it pauses the so it's not like it'll just sit on you at zero seconds and not like fade off if you're at 30 seconds you'll chill at 30 seconds right yes it'll keep it'll yeah. just hold that timer and then as soon as the green buff person leaves it goes to 29 28 so on and so forth um yep, so it only extends main buff main jungle buff yep fair enough uh definitely don't want a forever enhanced fire giant because that seems pretty good uh mm -hmm. speaking of fg some changes to fg uh, alongside a lot of different jungle camps fire giant got tankier so did all the furies oracles uh lesser scorpions actually got a little bit squishier um mm -hmm. as well as gave you more healing and alpha harpies ended up being end up being a little bit easier talking to twig today as part of the the content thing he was telling me that he felt like it ends up being more uh, it ends up feeling more like a jungle. There's more camps on this map. Um, there, there's a little bit more to do. And with the changes to the tankiness, it, that kind of helps contribute to that. It, it, was that part of the goal for, for mid-season jungle? Um, it was part of the goal for mid-season jungle. Obviously, whenever we add camps, we know we're giving the jungler potentially more stuff to do. Anyone around your team that's also rotating can contribute. But I think a lot of the tankiness really came down to you can see a lot of it in our balance changes where we're not quite sure what bootsless world does to smite yes one guess that we have is that it makes it easier to kill things i think bear uh kind of alluded to that earlier where you kind of melt things yep and so this is our hey we think we're moving this direction where you're going to have more power to kill things we're preemptively making things a bit tankier to deal with so that you don't blow through it as quickly we'll see once players actually start playing on it and make further adjustments if needed but we want to preempt a little bit so we're not going into a bootsless world where we haven't done anything to try and adjust what we think is going to happen. Yeah, I think that makes some sense. And Barra, you, you said that you still feel like you're dealing quite a bit of damage, but how much... But I, I am a little, you know, my least favorite thing when I'm casting is these 
fire giant dances that take forever where no team actually threatens the objective and the other team knows they don't threaten the objective so they just stand yep. there and wait until they pull the fire so i don't want to get into a world where fg is super tanky and impossible to kill but maybe could use a little bit more from your feedback yeah that was my biggest issue with like crit versus non-crit builds and i mean you saw like teams like dragon switch the dps onto their jungler who was their main objective DPS instead of their ADC having it. And because I felt it kind of like forced me into building crit whenever um, we felt like it was going to be like a stagnant late game. We would just all dance around fire. And it was kind of like, I would say like bad, but definitely felt forced, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then when I watch other teams play, if both hunters weren't going crit, like you said, it was literally a dance at the fire for like five minutes. Yeah. What support's going to make the play? What mage is going to make the play over the wall? Like, please, somebody make a play. Because the ADC can't pull fire and do damage to fire. So I was like, I was even theorycrafting, like, maybe put Kins, like, on a very, like, low amount of DPS for fire or something. But then if you have Kins on your jungler, and then you have Kins on your ADC, maybe it melted too fast. But, yeah, hmm. I was, I was theorycrafting for a while. Because I was like, Whoa, don't, hurt, don't, don't hurt yourself, Barry. I know, my ADC <laughs> brain. Those two brain cells are working together pretty bad. <laughs> On overtime, the steam <laughs> coming out of your ears as you're trying to think of how to do it. I uh, I can definitely appreciate that. You know what else I can appreciate, Barry? Yes. How comfortable I am in my manscaped boxers. Are you wearing Are you wearing yours today? No, I'm wearing my shirt. I know, I didn't wear my shirt. I'm wearing a I think you should leave shirt because season two is coming out soon. The best show of all time. I can't wait. Uh, listen. You guys got 20 minutes into this podcast without us plugging it, so you consider yourselves very lucky. Got to give a shout out to Manscaped, of course, the sponsors for the predict for the Backliners podcast. Uh, we did have some big news that our code is changed, and that's a big mm -hmm. deal. We will not get credit for anyone using the old code, so don't use code Back anymore. You want to co use code B Line, as in Backliners without the A C K. So B Line still get you still get the same great offers. 20% off your entire order and free worldwide shipping. We got sent the Lawnmower 4.0, as I've got right here. This thing's a beast. Absolutely love it. Um, seriously, if you want to support the podcast, best way to do it is by going to manscaped.com using code BLINE in order to get 20% off and free shipping. All right, there it is. We, uh, we well segued in, and we're straight out. Yeah, to it was the super smooth. I didn't even know it happened. Thank you. Super smooth, just like my... <laughs> Anyways, uh, meditation. <laughs> meditation got a rework. I can't be stopped, man. You got, you got to. Oh, no. This, like, I didn't cast this morning. Like, I got to get it out of my system, man. Normally, I'm trolling Dave in the, in the green room and that kind of stuff. But I just didn't get my opportunity today. So, that's how it goes. Meditation got a rework. And uh, it's one that little biased myself because uh, I, I i helped a little bit on it but uh, one mm -hmm. that i like quite a bit now no longer just a burst heal instead four separate pulses uh one every uh half a second i believe um and you end up restoring or no excuse me once every second for four seconds yeah. so i got there um you get eight health or eight health plus five percent of your missing hp and mana for each tick and then the upgrade also takes your cooldowns down by half a second per pulse. So, mm -hmm. Barra, we'll start with you. I know you already gave me a little bit of feedback earlier, but yep. we're just going to pretend oh, we didn't. I'll say the same thing. Perfect. Give me your meditation feedback. Uh, I think it's cute, but I don't think it's great because it's of missing health, not of total health. I think if it was of total health, it's way easier to fit into a team fight. I think because it's missing health, you want to use it out of combat, and once everyone's taken poke, I think there might be a world where you can use the upgrade but i think other support relics are just better and i think med is the only or i think support is the only role that you would get med on i don't think any other role would like go out of their way to get it mm -hmm. um i think it's cute but i don't think it's like better than like four or five other relics yeah pon what are your uh, initial impressions of meditation right now yeah so i think most of it is actually like when we've play tested it it's felt really powerful in situations where it gets like maximum effect mm -hmm. but those situations don't always happen mm -hmm. um the big thing i do like about this one is it's no longer directly compared to shell yes because shell and it have a now different purpose and where they actually use in a fight and that's one way that we can future balance it if it is and gonna end up being too weak 
is now at least it has something that it's that's different for and you can increase that strength yeah so i think in general i'm actually really excited to see if teams do leverage it the the little bit of fear that we've had it's it's kind of like in design if, if it's not scares you a little bit it's kind of probably going to be boring this one scares me a little bit if multiple people on your team team start building it and pulsing it and giving your team basically a double volley of abilities uh that starts to get a little scary but we'll see yeah uh, any cooldown reduction can be can be very intense maybe pe everyone's playing it kind of close to the vest on the content today but i was thinking the exact same thing pond like what if your jungler and your support both just buy this and you mm -hmm. get eight you get like four seconds off your cooldowns flat mm -hmm. in the middle of a team fight yeah i think solo also has a little bit of flexibility in what relics they could build so yeah. there might be some room there as well yeah. um so I'm not sure. We'll have to see. But I'm just excited that it has at least a different purpose than it previously did. It no longer is directly tied to Shell, which I think is healthy for the Relic. Yes, agreed. Definitely. Shell you want to use before the burst. Meditation you want to use after the burst because, again, it is that missing health. Mm -hmm. um, I am hoping that you get the cool moment in the middle of a team fight where, like, because it's missing health, you know, they, they med, they heal up a little bit, you chunk them low. All of a sudden, that next pulse comes out, massive yep. heal, chunk them low again, you know, keeping them hot, keeping them topped up. But we'll mm. see if it ends up being there. All right, Pon, you knew we were going to get to it. It's it's yeah. Sundering Spear. Uh, the <laughs> one that everyone, Bear is shaking his head. Everyone's a little concerned about it. Talk to me about why we went with the direction we did on Sunder. It yeah, better so... be a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> True. So, Sundering Spear... One, it's really interesting. It was a relic that like was not actually being built, and we planned mid season pretty far in advance. And like as we we do this a lot in design, where we'll make a plan for something, and like that patch, all of a sudden everyone will start building it. And we're like, oh crap! <laughs> Transcendence. <laughs> yeah. So Excuse that me. what happened a little bit with Sundering Spear. But I think the core problem is still there. It's the only relic you can miss. Like sure, you can whiff your like someone can beat out your beads or agus and hold an ability because you panicked and they, you can die um you can like you can use shell in opportune times but sundering you can just miss mm -hmm. um and, and that created a lot of variance and so the goal here was give it two charges make it stand out a little bit more uniquely among the other relics and then because it has two charges you can tune it such that one miss one hit is now a little bit of a middle ground you you can tune it there um it probably is way too good right now especially at 90 seconds um, especially with the combination of Relic Dagger that people are trying to mess around with a bit. Um, I, I don't know how much I can confirm, but I would expect some change to happen before it goes live. Um, I don't know, maybe we can get there on other items too. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely really good as is. I think it has room to be adjusted downward a little bit, but I think the general goal is still there. Just decrease the variance of this item, make it a bit more applicable in a few other scenarios. Yeah. Definitely. Also, you know, the the fact that it doesn't just insta-destroy shields probably feels a lot better for oh, a lot yeah, of characters. Oh, yeah, Nike. Yep, Nike actually mm -hmm. is allowed, so you can uh, you can actually play that god in, in higher level, I suppose. Barra, uh, just a quick side note. If you could try and refrain from intimidating our guests whenever they come <laughs> on, uh, that would be ideal, you know? Like, Pan, he's a hard what? worker, man. You, you don't gotta you don't gotta threaten him as he's about to give an answer. It better be good. <laughs> <laughs> i'm literally budget zap man right now bro wow oh, no. but, but, oh lord okay well <laughs> lord ADC help us is so bad everything else is so <laughs> and for those of you listening you are free to rewind to the very beginning of the podcast where barra goes uh yeah my role got buffed so i'm feeling <laughs> pretty good um you're free to go back to that at this point if you like and we'll wait for a second and now you're back except so for, welcome except back for sunder Except for Sunder. Except you know, for Sunder. But, but Barra, that's not your role. That's every role has to deal with that. No, it's not just dude, you. Tanks, they build full tank and then build Sunder, and now it's like they have hybrid items. Yeah. Yeah. And one less relic. Just juke it, dude. <laughs> ne <laughs> next, next, next. Next. Bracer of yeah. Radiance. The new relic being joined. I I don't even know if this was in with the last time I played Tested Pond. I have not gotten a chance to play with this at all. Mm -hmm. I'm very curious to hear how you guys got... I mean, Bracer of Undoing gets removed because it's too similar to the new meditation. It becomes this this new relic for Bracer of Radiance. Uh, I think it's a really cool design. Talk to me about how you, you got here. Yeah, so one thing we wanted to look at was because Bracer of Undoing and, and Meditation really shared an identity now. Yeah. Um, it Brace of Undoing is really underutilized, and when it was good, it was very frustrating to play against. Meditation is essentially the healthy version of that that's more applicable. Um, and so we want a new relic. We want to focus on something that's support-related because we think carries have like enough variety of what they can choose, even if they're just going to pick beads and it's every time. 
maybe a blink here and there. Yep. Um, but giving is only interesting to supports to kind of flex and, and kind of identify themselves as different support types of players. Um, so the he thing here is we wanted to give them some capacity to do what supports will naturally do, which is kind of control where their team's going to be fighting, control the area by getting ward vision, and then making it so that team or supports who use it in a clever way can really create zones of area that their team are just better at. Mm. Um, girdle is is good, but it's not really a zone tool, right? Like if you girdle it's your team, commit. the enemy team sees that you commit. Right. Versus. I can pop this down at Fire Giant, and you know those Fire Giant dances you're seeing? Yep. We're standing on a 10% damage buff. You guys are going to get mm -hmm. poked out really heavily before that happens. So we had to make sure it was something for supports that was distinct from Girdle and Shell and all the other choices. And I think this one is creating a zone of space for your team, I think, is a really interesting take. Um, I've seen a lot of people discussing how they want to use it, including comps like maybe the Hunter goes your leader's cow into a... Um, bracer of radiance into a girdle as well and you just actually melt the objective before the enemy team can respond mm. that kind of stuff is exciting to me that's a very like that's like the girdle anubis to, to melt gold fury right yep <laughs> that's really interesting to me so i'm hoping that's where it falls we'll see what ends up happening with it but that's kind of the, the idea. yeah I, I and by the way bear i don't think he was saying you should build girdle yeah. That's, okay, I got yeah. that. Just making it sure. Again, I'm, I've got no, no, I've no. got pawns back here. Okay, that's one of those brain cells was like, hey, <laughs> no, no, the supports are building those things. <laughs> yeah, tell Jake that that's his job. Good luck with that. But you can uh, you can try and get that going. Um, you would love that. Very excited to try it. I did see a good question in chat. Uh, Severin wants to know, um, can you teleport to the to the bracer ward? Um, it is functionally a ward for all intents and purposes, so my guess is yes, although I literally have not tested that, so I don't know. All right, fair head. enough. And but does it, it, it is a ward. And the upgraded version is a sentry ward. It, it does not count towards your ward total, right? So you could have a ward, a sentry ward, and a bracer ward out? Uh, it does count to your sentry. This ah. is not let you cheat out an extra thing. Now, you can double sentry, right? Yes. Which yes. Uh, you could still do, but you can't cheat the amount of wards you can have out gotcha okay good clarification there for sure um all right i don't want to go through every item bonus but or uh, every item change but maybe just kind of hit on a couple and feel free to to bring some up if you think i missed them um barrel we'll start with your ikaval that you uh that you've been liking it did receive a nerf coming into this as one of those that design thought might be a, a really strong rush item it has its attack speed reduction reduced from 10% per stack to 7% per stack, but it increased physical power from 30 to 35. Do you think that's a net nerf uh, for the item, and is it still worth rushing whenever midseason comes out? Definitely still worth rushing, and I think the attack speed reduction is nice, but I think if you're going Ickable versus someone who's not going Ickable, they're still going to feel it in the same ways, mm -hmm. like pre-nerf, basically. Mm -hmm. um, I do think it was a good shift, but uh, definitely still a very, very good item to rush, in my opinion. Pon, I know that you're uh, you're an Apollo main as well as a, <laughs> as a jungler. Is this uh, your preferred rush item in ADC? Uh, so far, it has been. I've tried a few other things, mainly Transcendence Rush. Mm -hmm. um, but if I'm just going toe to toe with it with the like opponent, if I feel like I can actually get away with that. It's probably my go-to. I don't think anything else lets you trade quite as well as this, which is part of the reason why we adjusted it this way, right? It's yeah. it's one of the items that kind of caught our radar as this item has potential to be... Because it's it really was a bridge item that mm -hmm. is really, really good when rushed, but had to compete with boots. So now that limitations were moved, um, we were careful with it. So we wanted to adjust it in a way we thought would largely reduce the impact of how you felt fighting it being rushed. Yeah. Um, but we didn't want to kill it, right? We want to, again, we want to see what happens first. So we're just doing soft nudges on our ideas of what might happen, but not going too drastic with any of those changes because we need to see our ideas validated first. It's so funny that an item like Ikaval that really has barely been seen at all at SPL mm -hmm. level meta needs a preemptive sh shift, but a shift, a mm -hmm. slight shift downwards because otherwise it's just going to dominate. And that's how, that's how important removing boots is like that's just kind of a wild way to do it i i uh I, I haven't told this story i don't think on the podcast and hopefully aj won't get mad at me for doing so but i remember many years ago when we came in for a for a meeting um and he was like all right here are these masks that we're going to introduce like this is our spicy thing uh mm -hmm. 
what uh what how, what do you think this is going to do uh, oftentimes when when the design team consults with the esports team it's like what is this going to do to the pro meta how is this going to affect the game at a high level that kind of stuff and i think that was the first time i'd ever been like i have literally no idea <laughs> like i i can't tell you because i just don't know what it's really going to do and the second time i said that was when you were like what happens to spl if we remove boots and i was like dude mm-hmm. I don't know. Like it is just, it's just so wild that I can't, I can't really wrap my mind around exactly what's going to happen, but I think it's, uh, I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun to, to figure out. Well, we got into arguments cause like one, one of the early ideas was, Hey, if everyone's rushing damage, our tanks just really weak now. Yeah. And then like some of us were convinced others were like, no tanks just rush sob faster. Like you're mm-hmm. never going to be able to damage them. And then like, we kept going back and forth and in play test people start rushing different things trying to like prove their their idea of it right and <laughs> the amount of shakeup we've seen in like just the the like few weeks we've really had to like play around with uh bootsless world um i don't think anyone can actually predict if anyone predicts it correctly like writes down like their predictions and gets it right kudos to you you deserve like you're like literally a prophet yeah it's impossible to tell it's impossible to tell and that's what that's what makes these sort of changes exciting, man. I don't know. I'm uh, I'm pumped, man. Definitely very excited to hit it uh, for it to hit live. Um, all right, Mystical Mail lost some damage in the early game, gained damage late game. Same sort of thing. Assuming that this is going to kind of dominate solo uh, off the bat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we saw basically all our solo laners defaulted to immediately rushing this. Yep. Um, and it was really good, and we felt like it's probably worth just preemptively adjusting this. Um, mm-hmm. just to make sure that if that is the case, it's not as potent as it could be otherwise. Um, again, just, and it's also interesting because now this has a bit more late game application than it before. So that's kind of also hype as well. If we can get like two different style changes here in one go, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, all right. Here's the next one that, uh, you knew we were going to have to talk about at some point Pond the staff of Mirrodin rework, mm. um, big change to how this item works no longer gives you a second cat you know a free cast of an ability after using your ultimate mm-hmm. now after you've finished casting your ultimate you gain mirrodin's brilliance which provides 80 percent uncapped cooldown mm-hmm. reduction which decays to 40 percent over seven seconds uh talk to me about how you why mirrodin received a rework in the first place and do you agree with the initial feedback that it feels pretty strong uh, on paper uh, so the reason why we changed it is it had very confusing interactions. Um, not all our abilities have like a clear cast state. Um, not all our ab- abilities have a clear, like this was the thing that gets damage reduced. Um, a good example, for example, is Baba's potion, which potion mm. cast gets consumed because your thing doesn't go on cooldown until you throw one. Yep. So you could throw your stored one, but is that the damage reduced one? Um, there's a lot of other smaller interactions like that all throughout the game and Anyone who really plays Staff of Mirrodin probably encounters them on a, on a daily basis. Um, this is a much more intuitive understanding. It's literally, imagine you just had 80% CDR instead of 40%. Everyone can kind of picture what that means. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. And so we want to make sure this felt really interesting and fun because double casting was really fun. So we want to make sure the effect was as powerful enough to kind of create that same feel. Um, and I don't know if we've gone far enough. I think we need to go to 100% uncapped CDR. <laughs> Just start slinging abilities left and right, dude. No, no, no stopping it. Yeah, it's it's definitely strong. We're definitely looking at it. I even when I tweeted out like the hey, how's everyone like PTS? Please don't talk about Mirrodin. We're looking at it already. <laughs> Listen, that's so. as you said. It design in design. If it doesn't scare you a little bit, maybe it's not going to be super exciting. So this yeah, is kind of the way it's to always go. good to release a little bit strong on like certain scenarios like this where it's like a very new effect. Yep. Because if it's weak, just no one's going to try and experiment with it. And so ah. we might have just gone a little bit too hard on that knob where it's like a bit too strong. So nice thing is we have a lot of adjustment knobs. Um, we'll have PTS balance notes soon, mm-hmm. I think early tomorrow. So you guys will get a chance to see kind of what we did. I have uh, an excellent example of that. Do you guys remember whenever Blackthorn Hammer was, re- was released oh, and everyone was boy. like, oh, it's terrible. I'm not going to play this at all. And design yep. gave it a little buff. Still everyone mm-hmm. hated it little buff at that point it was probably really good everyone was still think thought it was garbage and then it was like buff buff after that and all of a sudden it was literally one of the best items of all time in smite yep. uh for its cost effectiveness that's a that i very much agree with gods being released on the stronger end and items being released on the stronger end because otherwise well, it takes so long for the player base to actually like once you get it to being good 
then they never then it it still takes them too long after that to agree that it's good. How many times do we have to buff Chiron? Fifty thousand. Fifty thousand times. And after every podcast okay, not after every podcast, but after multiple podcasts, Bear, I hope you're gonna back me up on this. I'd be yep. like, hey man, I think Chiron's pretty good. Like he's gotta be good. Look at all the tools. And Bear goes, Nope. <laughs> for you know why would i play karma when i could play this or that and yep. for the large part he was right on a lot of those but um that's just how it goes like the yeah. the the player base that's the way it works in mobas and hey that's uh that's how it is um all right let's look at some other items uh death toll changes i suppose we should go over these for you barra um oh wait no it's only melee basic attacks never mind yeah. you, doesn't matter for you oh i was sad about the berserker change yeah i was that gonna was... bring that up that was one of like my favorite items to build in ADC, and right when I heard that boots were getting removed, I was thinking about rushing this item because it's such uh -huh. a good like rush item. And then I saw it was only built by assassins and warriors, and I was sad. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. it is really hard to balance for like all three roles. But yeah, yeah, we we like this actually had a lot of discussion internally as well. Like this feels like cheating, right? Yeah. It feels like this is like kind of like the lazy answer to the problem. But we had a lot of these problems before where like items are really good in different roles that we don't intend them to. And we can find balanced solutions or things like the katana tree to really help that. This was just a case where like really none of those answers made sense. And making like a whole new tree for like the berserker shield didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So this I would just treat this as a one off case. But yeah, it's it's a little bit unfortunate that we're limiting item diversity for different roles, but I think it's it, mainly it's because in hand warriors, basic attack warriors have been struggling for like the entire season we wanted to make sure that their toolkit was well-rounded and so this felt like an appropriate sacrifice i'm sorry hunters <laughs> it's you, fine you listen you scotty players out there ruined it for everyone so we just had to take it out of <laughs> oh, your hands that double defense build the berserkers void both have uh -huh. percent pin on it oh that's so good <laughs> uh -huh. you make me sick Barry, you make and no me assassin sick. could ever kill you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Regardless of their build, they could never kill me. And that was when Embrace was still really good, so you just had a million yep. prots next to him, too. Yeah, no. You're, you're, mm -hmm. You were ruining all the fun for everyone. Good old days. Um, you do get a little bit of good stuff from Shogun's. Uh, Jake might be building that for you more because it gives you a little bit uh, more attack speed aura. Any uh, any world where you're experimenting with Mana Conceptor again, Barry, or is that, uh, is that uh, day gone? I haven't built it yet, but I think it might be decent. But it's hard to apply it through the lane sometimes. Yep. Um, which is my only issue. It's good if like if it's a raw one v one, it's really good. But outside of that, I think it's a little, little weird. And yeah, it, I I think it's just a little weird. I think I'd rather go another or the basic hunter starters over it. How about in particular leather cow? now provides 7 mp5 hunter's cow also getting 15 mp5 on the upgrade mm -hmm. yeah i was honestly a little sad about this change because i like the mm. uniqueness of cowl and i like the fact that it didn't give you mana and gave you kind of a different way to play the game but i feel like this is more of like a noob friendly change mm -hmm. i would like to see more like power given to it or one of the stats it already has to get boosted instead of like the mana um, or to give it like less MP5. Mm -hmm. It was kind of, I would say it was kind of just like a Hachiman item, or if you wanted to go like, uh, like mana potions mm -hmm. for your landing phase, it was good. But I understand why, but I was, I was just a little sad because it, it lost its like uniqueness for me. You know what? Some of the, the comments I got about it was is that they want that to be higher. They're like, make it 10, make it what? 15. <laughs> yeah, because people, no, people shot. want to build into the items, but like, obviously losing mana is a big big sacrifice people mm -hmm. people like want to be able to cast abilities in lane i think that's why we kept the number as low as we did is we know people kind of want to experiment with these items but this item does have the identity of not being the mana sustain choice so we kept the numbers low intentionally i would imagine in the future if it does need more buffs i probably would stay away from giving it more for example i probably would go mm -hmm. more the direction you suggested of maybe it just needs a bit more power maybe it needs a bit more love elsewhere mm -hmm. do you so think I... uh, sorry go ahead barra Oh, I already thought it was like really good. I was I was honestly a little sad that I had to go bluestone for like the early like pre like five levels honestly because I thought Cal just like way outshined it. Mm -hmm. Do you think that with this change alone, Cal becomes the go to uh, starter for hunters? Uh, maybe not the go to, but definitely like in uh, like I'd say like contestant for number one. I would say okay. not the hundred percent go to, but definitely up there. 
Sure. I, I think it literally has so many stats on it right now, man. Mm -hmm. So many. Yeah. Um, all right. I do want to let the give it give the chat a, a chance to ask some questions. So instead of going over every single god change, I want to ask you guys for your favorite god change uh, in this patch. Uh, yeah. Bera, which which one is yours? Honestly, the Artemis change. I knew it. I knew I it. The big. world's best Artemis Trapper gets four seconds off at level one yeah. on the cooldown, so you know he's that gonna is, like it. That is a giant buff, honestly. Mm -hmm. That is an enormous buff because you leave that button at like level one for a very or rank one for a very long time, so that cooldown is used throughout the entire game from like level two on. And I think that the buff on the two is also very good. Like I, I would expect Artemis to be in like most games now, in my opinion. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. Yeah. Oh. I can't wait to hear the Tusky whenever you're whenever you just completely mess up your ult and then what? and then it doesn't go where you want it to. I love it. That's my favorite. Those are my favorite Barracuda yeah. moments, man. Look, I've yeah. handcrafted the AI. It can't mess up anymore. It's, it's entirely <laughs> user error. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. There's times where there'll just be like a target right in front of me. I'll Tusky, literally <laughs> melee range, and my Tusky will just sit there, and I'm like. What? Like, other people's Tuskies are launching themselves through walls and mine can't hit the guy right in front of me? Like, literally melee range? If you could get a sound tattooed on you, I would consider getting Tusky tattooed on me. Because I think that is the fun... That is, like, my... F Man, I'll tell you what. When we're, like, playing Smite in, like, our Discord and that kind of stuff, if anyone ever has a bad Artemis ult, all of us instantly go... Tusky, <laughs> because we just think it's so funny, man. I You're love welcome. it. I absolutely love it. All right, Pond, what's your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite change? Uh, I should say Kali, just because uh -huh. Kali's getting a buff. You're a Kali abuser. Yep. Um, but I think Baron. Mm. Um, I just like the idea of like the buff kind of actually adjusting his support and mid potential. Now the one, if you double hit someone, it automatically applies the power debuff. That's a pretty big deal. And in a so support role, like, as Mimi as it might be, you can now, like, actually base attack your opponents and just build that up. So, like, it's pretty reliable now that you're going to consign spirits to get the heal, you're going to apply the power debuff, all that kind of stuff. So I'm excited for that one. I want to see how that shakes up. Uh, yeah. I think that's going to be cool. I, I uh, heard a lot of excitement about that buff during the, uh, the roll queue that we just did as well. Um, mm -hmm. For me personally, I love the Hades change. I don't know how much it's going to matter, on the alt because i do think you'll kill the minions pretty quickly but mm -hmm. getting reduction on your abilities uh i just think that thematically hades is like hades just owns you if you fight him in a minion wave like that's when i think of hades identity mm -hmm. that's his identity is that he's gonna push he's gonna push you really well and if you fight him in a minion wave he's gonna absolutely own you and leaning into that identity as niche as it is i think is really cool um, and I really like it, and mm -hmm. I'm going to be spamming Hades and losing my team a lot of games, although statistically that's not true because I'm going to win a ton of games if I'm mm -hmm. playing Hades. Play more Hades, everyone. Um, I'm super pumped. I'm super pumped about the Hades changes, and I've seen a lot of people in chat saying that they're uh, they're very excited as well. Da Bizzle, one of them. Um, all right, let's, uh, I guess we'll kind of open it up. Yes, Fine OK in the chat knows. Hades is broken. Thank you, Fine. I, you know it. That's what I've been saying it, and you've been saying it as well. Um we'll do like uh like a couple minutes of questions here before we close out the podcast yeah. before we get to of course the question of the week which um is a big one this week uh before we get to the questions while we let uh the chat catch up for a second we do want to give another shout out to manscaped as a sponsor here for the backliners podcast make sure you're getting 20 percent off and free shipping with the code b line at manscaped.com that's b-l-i-n-e at manscaped.com 20 percent off free shipping and unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. That's definitely the call. Again, best way to support the podcast for sure is to go to Manscaped and use that code. All right, Severin has a question for you, Pond. Benevolence upgrades. Why does Compassion get GP5 but Animosity doesn't? Uh, because I'm a nerd and I don't want <laughs> it to. Um, the, the, the answer largely is like the idea of the starters is that one is like the inline upgrade and the other is the weird upgrade. Mm -hmm. And so it makes sense for me to the compassion, the inline upgrade to have GP five, the animosity, the non inline upgrade to not. And I'm such a nerd to the point of when we changed tainted uh, steel to have the reduction tainted amulet was the odd one and breastplate was the inline one. But because now they share, I swapped their order. So they actually oh. are swapped to be in line now. 
<laughs> someone is going to get... Vi- there is going to be an incredibly angry Reddit post about that. I took my time to go in the DV and make that change. <laughs> Fair enough. I uh, I respect that for sure. Um, what are uh, the thoughts on Morgan Le Fay so far? Um, mm-hmm. I guess I'll start since, I, uh, since I'm a mid lane player. I think she is awesome and super fun. I think she's probably a little bit too good right now. But again, talking about earlier, I think that's probably the way to release gods. Um, I love the mini game of proccing the passive and trying to keep four. I, tr- I tried a lot in play test to like keep four stacks out. And then right when the fight was about to break out, I'd proc my fifth to get a ton of power. Um, I think that's a really fun mini game that isn't, you don't need to play optimally in order to play the character well, which I think is really good design. Um, and I think she's just so much she, visually. She's awesome. The art team did such a great job. Um, and I just have a ton of fun every time I'm playing her. Um, and that's me uh, just gushing about how good Clumsy is for a little bit. Um, yeah. Vera, have you gotten a chance to, to play her yet? I played her a few times, and I didn't think she was that great my first game. And then the more I played, she just like exponentially got way, way, way better. Like yeah. once I actually learned how to play her, I think she's absolutely insane. Yeah. Um, I think she'll also be very good in comp as well. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I think she's going to be quite good. Pawn? I had the same experience, which was the first few times I played, I'm like, eh, I feel like I'm risky, I'm weak, and then mm-hmm. by, like, game three or four with her, I was like, yeah, I can just, like, actually kill you with dragon fear combo, and there's nothing you can do about it. And yep. As long as you're okay with being a bit aggressive, you can get away with a lot of stuff, and I do think, also, I undervalued the slow field for too long, and that I always use the fear, but the slow field has a ton of applications that's really cool, so just, like, a character that you can kind of feel yourself learning every time you play is yeah, I think uh, I think that definitely fits the description. All right, Final K has an idea here, and I'm sorry to put you on the spot, Pond, but this is a pretty good idea. Uh, Bria, his his fiance, thought of an idea to be able to practice PTS on live client, where you would be able to start a custom game, start at three thousand gold, but require everyone to buy fifteen hundred pot right off the bat, get the movement speed pot right away. It's not perfect because you'd have eighteen percent at level one, yeah, but it's it's something right it's interesting I, yeah. I mean i think that's a cool idea yeah i don't know it, do we need is there something we need to do in order to make that happen can you maybe there isn't an option a custom option for three thousand starting gold no because i think it's is it you do yeah for assault oh. yeah i thought it was oh yeah sure because assault has it so it's probably 1500 3000 5000 thousand. yep so you might actually be able to just do that already Although you could just give five thousand, as long as people are playing by rules, you could do things like everyone starts with like the slow, like a like a small movement speed item, and then they can build up to higher movement speed items, and then build elixir. Yeah, you have to like, yeah, I don't know, that'd be tough. It is a good I will idea. Say, it has been hard to play live. Yes, uh, I've been I've been playing in a bootsless world for for a, a little bit more than a month now, and regularly, whoever every time I play live, I'm like, oh, I have to buy boots again. Ugh. This is a tragedy. It yeah, is it feels so, so forced now. Like it feels like a chore now to buy boots. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's very, uh, it's very difficult to to revert back for sure. Um, Britt wants to know what we think of Yamoja. Um, is she hard to balance since she doesn't use mana? And when you look at buffs and nerfs, how do you choose what gets balanced? Uh, oh, she's I, complicated. Go, yeah, she is complicated. I definitely think that her dominance at pro play. And if you look at smite.gg and like the, those sorts of stats, you can tell that her win rate isn't very good. I think that that paints a pretty clear picture that she, those types of gods are always difficult to balance, but I'm interested in what these changes for mid season are going to do for her because it, you know, it's not, it's not a hard, like super hard nerf. You know, she got some things to, to compensate for the, for the changes, but I think at a high level, not getting bubble spammed is going to be a huge deal. Um, mm-hmm. And that and that's going to help at a high level. Barra, do you think that is enough to, to push her out of the, the top support? Um, I haven't played against it yet, so I can't really let you know. Sure. Um, until I actually like am in that situation mm-hmm. where I would have died before. Um, yep. But yeah. Fair I, enough. I, I think she's... Like Pond said, I think she's ridiculously hard to balance because there's such a high skill ceiling with her and such yes. a low floor, in my opinion, that it's like, what, which crowd do you want to balance around and which do you yeah. want to make happy? And I 
I think characters like that are really fun, but weird for the overall community to learn. Yeah. Um, I will say that Mike once said uh, something to me about Emoja that I I thought was a really was a really good compliment to uh, to the god, and that's that Mike play, has played a ton of Emoja. He's one of the best Emojas in the league for sure. And he said that he doesn't think he's ever played a fight perfectly with that god mm-hmm. because he just has it, the the most options um, out of any probably any god in the game uh, with with no cooldowns. So she's tough, man. I am dog at that character. I am so Same. bad yeah. at Emoja. Like I'll be in the middle of a team fight and my team's getting hurt and like my brain will start thinking like, okay, shield everyone up. Okay, maybe I can send. Oh, I'm in bubble forms. So I have to throw out bubble, but then I'm not gonna be able to shield. And then like, if I just spam shield, then like I'm wasting shield and I just end up spamming shield because I don't know what to do. I just give <laughs> yeah. up, throw my hands up. And I, I just could like... have been like using my thing to repel people. Like there's so many things I could do to save my team that I ended up just like shield, 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 shield. And that's yeah. what I do. Yeah, I, I I know I'm not messing up that bad if I just spam two. So yep. you, you're gonna you're gonna be feeling pretty good. Um, all right, last last question because we're getting close to the hour mark. Super Cyrus sixty four wants to know any changes, Pawn, that you wish you could have done but never got approved. Um, or would maybe. never get approved. I suppose is the the way that they worded it. Um. I mean, I have my spicy take from time to time, but in general, like, I don't think I go too far outside of the realm. Mm-hmm. I have to think a little bit on this one. You might want to ask another question while I think. Sure. Um, I can scroll up and figure it out. Um, or I could ask the, the random question of the week, though. No, that has to uh, that has to be the end of the podcast. That's um... Yeah, so I, I think I have an answer. Perfect. Um, um, one of the changes that I think would be really cool to do is kind of like a change to how like power is calculated in smite Mm. um so for example magical power and physical power are very different numbers they don't interact with each other and because they're such different numbers there can be no overlap i played in a world where cupid was a magical physical attacker uh same with freya yep um and it'd be cool as an idea to unify the power structure such that ability toolkits could read things like this character gets 50% power from physical and 30% from magical mm. and to make sense and be doable. Um, but just the amount of work for that, how complicated mm. that is. I don't think it like it, it, it creates interesting problems to solve, but those aren't necessarily like good for the game. Right. Um, yeah. So I would restrain myself from trying to pursue a path like that, but I think it could be really cool. Cause I do have fond memories of optimizing physical, like uh, Fatalis raw. Yep. machine gun raw you used to be able to build fatalis on him and you could just two someone and just hold left click and also as hell every stance switch you could basic attack it would reset it and so you actually oh, had yeah. on hit hell builds yeah and like that stuff was really neat probably bad for the game or oh, thor could get gem of isolation yep. so his hammer and spin could slow people yep right like there's a ton of stuff there but it's probably really bad for the game and you shouldn't mm-hmm. yeah i think um it's it's so it's always interesting because the everyone expects that like the high level players are gonna make the best designers and I think in some sense that that is certainly a skill that you add as a designer but it is very easy to let you to let that part of your brain like take you away um, mm-hmm. and that's definitely in, in working with the dev team during the off season and that kind of stuff like trying to tune down the yeah, but how cool would it be if, you know, X, Y, Z could happen? I mean, um, story, I went in it with, um, I think it was the Denial Squad at the time, and we were there for the Hell rework. So this is before I was even a dev. Mm-hmm. And we were kind of like, hey, the Hell rework is kind of disappointing, which was really rude in hindsight, how we kind of <laughs> interacted there. And then we basically sat down and designed them a new passive. And bless the design team at the time for doing it. They put that passive in, which is the current Hell passive. Wow. And, like, that current Hell passive kind of has problems mm-hmm. that like we kind of shoehorn them into and like retrospect to be like oh there's so many better ways to have done this now yeah and like it's one of those things that like until you're actually in there messing around and seeing how players interact with things you think you have all the answers but it's really really hard and no single individual has every knowledge piece that they need to to solve the puzzle so yeah interesting uh, story there yeah definitely that is interesting i didn't know that um all right time for the random question of the week uh I don't know if it's brought to you by Manscaped, but we'll say it is. Again, use code BLINE in order to get 20% off on free shipping. Um, I tweeted about this yesterday, and I resented oh. the fact that someone asked, 
if I was not sober, because I was totally sober. I was on my way to lunch, and I was just talking with my friend about whether or not you would have a tail if you if you had the option. If you had the option to, to have a tail, would you say yes? And I think, let me give you my piece first, okay? First of all, to answer some questions, it would be a monkey-like tail. So you'd have some good control over it. They've got pretty good dexterity with it. It's strong. Same level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it, it it's good. But it's not like, as I said today at the office, although everyone kind of judged me when I said it, if you had a tail that had the dexterity of an <laughs> elephant truck trunk, you would obviously say yes, right? Like that would just be broken. That's just a fifth limb. <laughs> and if you're turning down a fifth limb, then I don't know what to tell you, okay? Because you're not trying to min-max life enough. This is like a, 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 it's an extra, it's like a half an extra limb. And I feel like that's good enough that I'd be willing to have the tail. Barry, you look like you're judging me with your eyes right now, and I don't appreciate that. I've been that. judging this whole speech, <laughs> man. What do you mean, man? Is it hairy or is it just skin? That's a good question. Which would be yeah, less weird? Yeah, that's what weird? I was going to ask. Whatever's less I'm weird. I'm picturing Saiyan tail. Literally. Saiyan tail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a monkey. Yeah, exactly like a monkey tail. Yeah, you say it. Okay. And Saiyan tails, they like Vegeta picks up, uh, or is it Raditz picks up Gohan, a kid who's probably like. I don't know, like 20, 30 pounds. If At I have least. an extra limb that's capable of lifting 20, 30 pounds, I'd go for it. I think you'd be crazy to not go for it. <laughs> like, uh, I, think it's I could feed different. myself snacks while I'm gaming without taking my hands off the keyboard. How many times have I died because I'm shoving chips in my mouth? <laughs> Thousands, How would you probably. feed chips with a tail? I'd pick you them get up. like a cup and you like... Yeah, just shake them in. in. Like a Pringles can. Yeah. What? <laughs> uh, for the sake of argument, no, I would not get a tail. Okay, man. <laughs> for the sake of argument. <laughs> for the sake of argument. I, I like being a normal human, and I would not want a monkey tail nor a skin-colored human tail. That would be creepy. I wouldn't yeah. get that even if it had the same strength. That's yeah. That's a little too weird. That's a good point. I think it does need hair. I think it does need hair. Though Severin does bring up a great point, of course. If it was hairy and I didn't want it to be, I could shave it with the lawnmower 4.0. Thanks to manscaped.com, where you can use Beeline for uh, 20% off and free shipping. Uh, AJ right. wants to know if it's Saiyan tail implies super monkey mode as well. Again, if it implies super monkey mode and you're not taking it, I can't help <laughs> you, man. Like, that is obviously the right call. Yeah, no way. No way it implies it super monkey mode. Yeah, like, no, with no. your math, that's what you said. 0.5 a tail is what you're going for. Super Saiyan monkey tail is like 1.5. Right? Yeah, oh, easy. more mm -hmm. than that. Imagine, the, like, you just... Oh my god, how many times can I use Super Rage Monkey Mode in my life? Every day. I'm not that angry, but I could be, I guess. If I had, if I had the power to go insane monkey mode, then I could do whatever I wanted. That's the whole point. And that's how Vegeta's born, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, thanks everyone for listening. Like, oh, Barry, go ahead. No, I would really like change my skin to like scales or like whatever I wanted than have a tail. What? Wait, why would you change that's your skin a to scales you or tail? You can't judge what? me for yeah. saying I take the tail. You why? want scales instead of skin? I mean, no, I mean like any texture. If I could change my skin to like any texture. Like on command? Yeah, I would rather do that than the tail. Uh... It's a very different power set. Yeah, it's very different. I would say they aren't even comparable, but... Yeah, you would. <laughs> man, those two ADC brain cells really got lost somewhere along the way, man. They, they needed I'm directions. Thinking, like, I've been up since, like, 7 this morning. Uh-huh. And I was just thinking of, like, other things I could do to my body that aren't, like, super OP, uh -huh. but on the same kind of level as tail uh-huh so and then that's where my two brain cells ended up i was like what if i had scales i don't i don't want scales now if you could go like someone brings up randall from uh, monsters inc by the way the best pixar movie uh i guess that would be op because he's like invisible so that would be really good but you'd have to be naked all the time and and if you were naked all the time, you'd want to be nicely groomed with a lawnmower 4.0 from Manscaped. There's no one better than me in the whole business. My goodness. Thanks for listening. Make sure you're giving us a good rating oh and all that gosh. kind of stuff. Check it out on all the different shows on the Prediction Network. Thanks uh, thanks so much for listening, everyone. And we'll see you next time here on the Backliners. Barra, do the thing. Bye. Nicely done. Thank you.